Hello, hello. My name is Ramon, cosmetic formulator, esthetician, sunscreen obsessed fan. And today we're talking about a sunscreen where I've tried a sunscreen from this brand before. Arguably, I think they are a top tier brand just because A, they're Australian. The Australian sunscreen game is a whole nother level and it's really affordable. You can get this brand at a lot of different drugstores in Australia, in the UK, and in the US. And today we're talking about Bondi Sands. If you don't know, I wanna have the video up here. I did review one of the Bondi Sands sunscreens, specifically their daily moisture face SPF 50 plus. This had a moment on social media because everyone was like, oh, this is affordable. It has no white cast. It's a chemical sunscreen and it's overall a really nice moisturizing texture, but it's a moisturizing sunscreen. This is for dry skin. On my oily ass skin, this was greasy. And so I've kept my eyes on the brand because for example, they have launched skincare. I have bought some of the skincare items, so stay tuned for that review, but they launched a full skincare line and I've been really interested in that because it's also affordable, really cute packaging. But recently I was at Boots with my friend Kinga and we were walking around looking at sunscreens and all of a sudden this product caught my eye. This is also from Bondi Sands and I'm pretty sure this is a brand spanking new launch. This is the Hydra UV Protect SPF 50 plus, very high protection body sunscreen. First of all, really cute packaging, love this color. This is only 10 pounds and it specifically focuses on hydration, which I have dehydrated oily skin so that like automatically I was like, I need to try her out. So today we're trying her out. I'll have all the timestamps down below in the description box, but you can also slide along the time bar. But I have the application footage. You're gonna see me apply eighth teaspoon, 0.8 grams to my face and you're gonna see if it has a white cast what it looks like and what it sets down to. I'm gonna talk about the texture, how it wears with makeup and the overall formulation highlights and then kind of give my final thoughts in comparing it specifically to the daily face moisturizer. So first let's look at the marketing behind this. Again this focuses on the hydration and their marketing is enjoy a sun soaked day the Bondi Sands way with our Hydra UV Protect SPF 50 plus sunscreen lotion providing UVA and UVB protection. Our four hour water resistant formula is infused with ethically sourced algae for deep hydration whilst offering an invisible non-greasy finish. This is dermatologically tested, suitable for sensitive skin, reef friendly, fragrance free, and sulfate free, and paraben free. So breaking down some of those main points, so we're looking at a SPF 50 plus that offers UVA and UVB protection. So UVB, obviously the SPF 50 plus. For the UVA here in the UK, obviously we have the UVA circled. And this also does have a boot star rating of three stars, good protection. So it's gonna offer you fairly good broad spectrum UVA protection. The SPF 50 plus, in my understanding, is just it at least reaches an SPF 60. It can reach beyond that without knowing that exact number and without them having a specific UVA PF marked on here. We don't know what those numbers look like, but it offers really good protection. On top of that, it is also four hour water resistance, which is also really good for comparison's sake. The other Bondi Sands one also had four hour water resistance. And then this says that it's infused with their ethically sourced algae for deep hydration. So that's one of the main sources for those humectant benefits they're marketing around. And then they do say that this does leave an invisible non-greasy finish. Looking at my experience of this, you can see as I dispense it out of the tube, this is not, I don't know why, in my mind I see hydra, I see hydrating, and I think gel. This isn't a gel, this is very much a gel cream. And and then you work it in, and this is a chemical sunscreen, there's no mineral filters, you see automatically invisible. It is clear. And this is non-greasy. And here's the thing with that. Do I agree with that claim? I think so. But you can see on my face, this is still very shiny. But I think this does do a better job of leaning more into that. This is a, like a hydrating gel cream lotion. This is not compared to the other Bondi Sands going to be a more oil heavy, emollient heavy experience in my opinion. There is some emollients to it. It's not gonna be completely matte. It's not gonna be completely grease free necessarily. I think this is a fairly suitable sunscreen for all skin types. I think it's best for normal skin types. If you have dry skin, could work for you with a moisturizer. If you have oily skin, I'm not gonna say it doesn't work for you. You just might have to powder or blot. Or if you just like a really glowy look, this is a really nice sunscreen. You can see I work it in, it sets down, and I just have a radiant shine. I don't feel this is greasy. I don't feel there's like oil slick happening on my face. I'm just left with a glow. I'm glowy. I'm very radiant. I'm very, very dewy. So I can agree with pretty much all of the marketing claims behind this one. And then in terms of makeup, again, this preps the skin nicely. It's not overly greasy. So I don't find that this affects the makeup application process at all. I don't get that weird thing that happens when like my skin prep is too greasy. So it messes up like the makeup especially in the pan, I didn't get that effect at all. And I don't think this necessarily affects the overall wear of the makeup throughout the day. I love a moisturizing base for my makeup, especially when I wear a matte complexion-based product because the radiance of this shines through the matteness of the makeup and it gives a very nice natural skin look. So overall, no issues with that either. No facial hair issues, obviously no white cast issues because this is a fully chemical sunscreen. So this is definitely going to be brown skin friendly, dark skin friendly. I think every skin type friendly, but again, if you have oily skin, I know my oily skin followers, they want something matte, 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 matte. 
the house down. This is not going to be the product for you, but you can mattify this. You can blot it. You can powder it down. Or if you have normal to dry skin, I think it's a really great option. Looking at the formulation breakdown for this, this UV filter wise is an Australian sunscreen. So they are able to use some of the non-US approved, non-FDA approved filters, but specifically there's not too many that we don't have here. For UVA, they focus on avobenzone, which is used internationally. It's a great UVA, especially into UVA1 range. Octocrylene, which is UVB and UVA2. So UVB into the shorter UVA wavelength. And then you have even T150 and enzacamine, and both of those are UVB filters. And those are UVB filters we don't have here in the US. This is alcohol, fragrance, and essential oil free. So that's a plus there. And I think that kind of goes with the sensitive skin friendly claims. With the UV filters, these filters for the most part have have good safety profiles and low irritation potential. Octocrylene is the one exception, but primarily the concern with octocrylene is with younger children, and that's where potential for some irritation might exist. So overall, I do agree that I think this could be uh, sensitive skin friendly. My eye area skin was compromised while I was testing this out. I didn't experience any stinging. I generally don't experience that, though. I know people always ask me to include that in videos. I don't experience eye stinging. I did it with this. You might have a different experience because that is very subjective. And then other formulation points. This does have tocopherol acetate, so that's a vitamin E derivative. So you're getting some antioxidant benefits from that. And then you have panthenol, glycerin, and aloe. So those are humectants. Aloe is also a little bit soothing. But those, I think, are also compounding on the hydrating benefits, the hydra EV benefits you're getting from the sunscreen beyond just the algae. The algae itself, which on the ingredients list, I'm not entirely sure what that algae is. They're claiming that around. I see a sodium carrageenan. Carrageenan is a seaweed. And so there is a carrageenan-derived ingredient. But there's not a focus on that specific ingredient, I don't think. They're not saying what seaweed it is. But... I see panthenol, I see glycerin, aloe, and I'm like, those are good. Those are proven humectants. I trust those. And overall, I do find this formulation to be hydrating. Again, it's a moisturizing sunscreen. This is my, I use this as my moisturizer and sunscreen step. I am good. As you see on screen, it does leave my skin nicely moisturized, nicely glowy, nicely dewy. So I do agree with the claims beyond that. And aside from those things, there's not a lot going on with the formulation. Again, you have the film formers that allow this to be four hour water resistant. You have the humectants, you have the UV filters, some other stuff. That's really it. It's very simple. So I think having that simple ingredients list is also going to help it be a little bit more sensitive skin friendly. So that's a plus if that's something that is a concern to you. But overall, do I think this is worth it? I think a thousand percent. Again, this is technically a body sunscreen. So think in the same vein as like black girl sunscreen, especially the kids version. Actually, I think that is a great parallel. Black girl sunscreen kids is similar in texture, feel and wear to this sunscreen. One thing I did note though, on the Bondi Sands UK website, I'll have the photo up here. There is a line of these Hydra UV products, but I cannot find those at Boots and anywhere here in the UK. So I don't know as of right Right now they're only available in Australia because I look it up and I think the Australian Bondi Sands website is the only one I see that has the full line. One of these is a spray version, not a mist I don't think, but it's like a spray lotion version. And then one of these is like in a little serum -y looking bottle and I think that's a face version. This is a body sunscreen. I think for the face it's perfectly fine. I don't think it's going to cause breakouts. I don't think it's too heavy. It's not overly greasy. I think it's convenient to just have one product that you can slather on from like scalp to toe. But that face one looks really interesting. Don't know if I can get my hands on that one. I might reach out to Bondi Sands and see if I can get that in PR. I bought this one just because it was available at Boots. So that is worth noting. So stay tuned. I might try to get that review up hopefully in the next month or so if I can get that product from Bondi Sands. But they do have a face version. It's just not available to me at the moment because this seems to be a very brand new launch here in the UK. So yeah, if you're looking for an affordable Australian made sunscreen that's going to give you a nice glow and focuses more on some hydrating benefits, the Bondi Sands Hydra UV Protect I think is a really, really great option. Stay tuned. Again, I'm going to try to get the face version if I can find that. Again, I am working on a lot of different sunscreen content. I have a whole European mineral sunscreen video coming out. I have a whole video that's taken me what, at this point almost a year to do talking about sunscreen sprays and mists for reapplication. That's coming up hopefully in the next couple weeks. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.